Jeff taught air brakes for how many years? Well, 40 years. 40 years, and I know almost nothing about air brakes. So let's just pretend that I'm one of the students here, and we're going to explore the system a little bit. So what's some of the coolest things that you've found in the development of this product? Well, that we can put the, the screens up and the wheel speed, the wheel speed sensors, and, and then all the feedback, all the audio, all the visual, pedagogically for students is a great plus. As you can see and feel what's happening with the system. And you can't do this really on a truck because you can't have an icy road or an icy uphill for all of your students. Here, you can have all your students experience all the things that are happening with this brake board. So, how did you do it in the past? If you can't do it on a truck, what are the teachers out there really doing? If, if there have never been ways or trainers that allowed you to do these types of road tests and demonstrate this to a, a full classroom of students, how did they learn? Well, you would go through the chuff test. Um, on a I, truck. On a truck. Uh, I used to jack the truck up, all four wheels off the ground, and then hold one wheel and apply the brakes so that we'd see the, um, the anti-lock operate. It uh, wasn't the safest uh, thing to do with spinning wheels and students in the lab. So this, the safety of this, everything is enclosed. There's not going to be any fingers lost or lives lost with this product. It's very safe. Another thing you'll notice is that the way we've built it and the dimensions of it are to fit into any door, fit into any classroom. The infrastructure requirements are not that much. You need a regular walled outlet and airline. You need quite a bit of air to make one of these work, but it allows you to do a lot of that training that rather than having a truck that's worth a couple hundred thousand dollars and weighs I don't know how much up on jack stands in an environment that is kind of safe with a whole bunch of students around it, and now you can do it in your classroom. So Jeff, do you want to tell us a little bit more about one of these areas that you really wanted to integrate into the product and be able to demonstrate both to in instructors and to students? So both the unloader valve and the ADIS air dryer are integral into the air system and the maintenance of the system. Of course, the air dryer removes the moisture from the air and cycles along with the unloader valve. Getting back to this governor, and now you're talking about the air brake dryer, there's stuff here that I don't really understand, Jeff, because I've seen a lot of other air brake boards in schools, and they've all got three tanks. And I don't see three tanks on this Consolab trainer. So I don't really know what's happening there. Can you maybe explain that to me? Well, the ADIS air dryer has the, the wet tank built into this, the air dryer itself. So it's all integral air. So all the air passes through here and through the air dryer. And when the unloader valve unloads, which we have a visual prompt for the unloader valves operating, the cylinder will extend. But this will also spit the air just like an operating system. So when the system reaches the uh, cutout pressure, the governor cuts out, the air dryer spits, we get a visual of the unloader valve. Jeff, there's a phenomenon that you keep wanting to teach me and show me and explain to me. So why don't we do that right now? Okay, so what I'd like to show is the actual actuation of the S-cam and the brakes during an anti-lock event. So we know that the front axle, we don't want those tires to spin or slide in a braking event. So the anti-lock control works very hard to modulate the uh, brake application so that it doesn't lock up the wheel. So we're going to demonstrate this by looking at the end of the S-CAM and we'll be able to watch the modulation and the physical action within the brake. This is key for the student's understanding of what's going on within the system and in the brake. Let's fire up the truck, bring it up to speed. We're going to put that left front wheel on ice and we're going to see what happens and watch the S-CAM, the air brake chamber and everything react. Here's our chuff test. Brakes are off, park brakes are off. Bring this up to speed. We're gonna put the left front wheel on ice. And this left front wheel 
we have the brake drum connected here. So we're gonna watch Jeff and we're gonna look at the details of how that reacts. Watch the escape. So what was happening there, Jeff? Well, the modulator valve was modulating the air pressure and making the brake apply and release as needed, as directed by the wheel speed sensor and the uh, computer control within so the brake. This was to prevent the wheel from locking up. So yes. as I'm driving down the road with the steering wheel, so if that wheel locks up, I'm going to lose yes. my ability to steer. Yes. But the ABS is now removing just removing a bit of brake pressure, applying a little more brake pressure, throttling that brake, if you will, to slow us down without locking that wheel. Absolutely. This is a very excellent video for your students to see pedagogically, that they get a visual of what's happening within the brake system. Now we've got disc brakes. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Well, disc brakes operate very similarly in the actuation, except that it's a, a caliper that captures the rotor in between. And so the movement is very small, but we're gonna focus in on that piston operation of the disc brake at this time. So I'll do a couple brake applications so we can see this. So when we were developing this product, we researched, we talked to technicians, teachers about the best faults that would be the most real world, both pneumatic faults and electrical faults. And now I want to demonstrate one of those faults to you. And then we'll have Jeff talk a little bit about the effects of that fault. So I'll put the fault in, we'll hear it, we'll see it, take the fault out and then Jeff can talk about it. We've got some kind of leak. I don't know what it is. There's air coming out here and here. So Jeff, we had some kind of leak and there was air coming out of the modulator and out of the relay valve. I don't know what's going on. The rod seemed to be sticking out kind of. What yeah, was that? This is a, a not so common failure that can really uh, throw the technician for a loop in their troubleshooting. So what's happening here is we have a leak between the chambers, between this emergency and the service chambers that shows up in the modulator valve and the relay valve and the exhaust. So typically a technician will go, oh, modulator's valve is bad, so let's replace the modulator valve. Well, that's expensive. So this simulates that leak, or it's an actual leak that happens, so that we can troubleshoot that uh, with the students. It's a fault that the student will be asked to troubleshoot as they work through the breakboard. So this is a one of the real world faults, one of many faults that we have in this board that uh, really simulate real world operation in the, uh, in the field. So now we're going to demonstrate the governor function. So we're going to see this rod stick out, then we're going to apply the brakes a couple times and it's going to go back in. So if I increase the system pressure high enough, the governor is going to unload. Now it's unloaded. We heard that. Evacuate the pressure. Watch what happens when I now press on the pedal multiple times. The governor is now loaded back up. To find out more about our products, visit consolab.com or you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. Thanks for watching.